I'm sitting there and I feel someone take my hand as Aww. I'm so, as I'm weeping in That's my so in my sweet. hand, and I look over. And she's holding my hand and I look over with like tears drilling down my eyes. And she just looks at me. She doesn't even ask me what my name is. And she was like, I don't know you, but we're gonna get through this together. <laughs> Welcome back to Happy and Healthy, everybody. I'm your host, Janina Amapola. And if you're watching the YouTube or Spotify, you can see that I'm greeted by some amazing <laughs> guests. <Yay! laughs> okay, so we have Angela. We have Ari. Do you prefer to go by Ari? Ari, yes. Ari, yes. Ari, yes? <laughs> no, she's, no, she's saying Ari, Ari yes. <laughs> Ari, yes. Ari, We're having I'm some like, struggles with pronouncing no, names. Ari, yes. <laughs> Ari, yes. <laughs> when did that nickname come about? Okay, Ariel. <laughs> Really and, good. of course, <laughs> Madison Pruitt. Madison! Uh, we're going to have full names. Yeah, we're going to have full names. So uh, this is a fun little collab that we're doing yeah. today. Um, if you're new to my page, I post every Tuesday, and my podcast is just Happy and Healthy. But we are joined with Girls Gone Bible Hi, guys. Hi, guys. and Maddie Pruitt. Woo! And we're really excited because um, I reached out to y'all, and yeah. I was like, we've got to make this a collab. But then you had said you already listened to my podcast before. I did, yeah. So when I – it had probably been a year that I was listening to Happy and Healthy, learning so much from you. And I remember when we started Girls Gone Bible, I showed Ari, and I was like, there's this girl. She's Christian. <laughs> she so cute. I was like, I have so much respect for this girl because she's such a good, godly woman and such a good example of – what it's like to be a Christian yeah. woman. And so I Thank loved you. you so much already. So loved in you? the past tense? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I love, love, She's love. like, and then I'm I met kidding. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm not> like, <laughs> we actually, you wouldn't believe it. We only met last night. Last night. Literally. I feel like I've known them my whole life yeah. forever. It was so God-ordained. As so, as so, yeah, we traveled to Texas. Yeah, yeah. thank La you guys for doing that. Of course. They're and moving here, by the way. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're my speaking husband's here. <laughs> we keep saying that. We're like, we we proclaim your husband is here. Guys, I'm losing my best friend to Texas. No, you're coming with her. I lost mine to Waco, so I feel True. We got on Zoom and like instantly clicked. And yeah. then right after that, I like texted Maddie and I was like, okay, you're coming on the podcast too. Yeah. Because y'all are best friends. We're best friends. Yeah. I was like, this is just going to fit. Yeah. And so we got dinner last night and we just could not shut up. No. Like, no. Literally, we kept cutting From the each moment other we sat down, it's like, tell me everything. Tell me your life yeah. story. Tell it me everything so you've ever done. The <laughs> and what we realized too is that me and Maddie are so similar. Yeah. yeah and, and then and we're Janine similar. And Ari are so, so <laughs> yeah. similar. And it's so, so funny. cool. <laughs> it's so cute. It's amazing. So this has just been like a long overdue, but y'all are new in this space. So yeah. how long have you been doing Girls Gone Bible? When did we start it? So we started Girls Gone Bible in May. Yeah. I think we posted like our first This recent. past May? Yeah. Recent. What? Like the end of May, I believe, was our first video. So I started posting videos on TikTok um, about at the beginning of this year. So only, I think I started right after Christmas. It was like January, and I started posting um, on TikTok. I had never been like a TikToker at all or posted videos on it, but I started talking about Jesus, and I would read little parts mm. of the Bible and I would just explain it and I would just kind of talk about mm. it and when I saw that they were doing so well and people were engaged and I've never had like really a social media presence like that so then when I saw all this happening and I, I really was so embarrassed when I first started posting <laughs> on TikTok about Jesus I, I remember the first video I posted I was freaking out i was like this is so embarrassing you didn't want to do it though i didn't what happened was is you were speaking scripture over me yeah and it was changing my life so rapidly mm. and i was like angela you need to put this online for everyone mm. to see you need wow. to change people like you're changing me that's what happened wow. yeah she yeah. Ari really encouraged me so much and she and i was like but ari that's so like <laughs> i know that i love god mm. and i know that i know jesus but other people Maybe don't they would never think yeah. that I'm qualified to do that. I'm not gonna do that. And she's like, You better go on. <laughs> Come on. I love and that. That's why you need Jesus. some good golly best yes. friends. And she yeah. believed that yeah. I you know, that I, I was capable and that I, I deserve to go and talk about Jesus mm. like that. And so mm. wow. then I started it started getting some traction and I went to Ari and I was like, Let's do a podcast. Well, we have a whole yeah, thing we about have a it. Story. Yeah, there's a whole story, but I was like, do you want to go and do a podcast? And she was like, I've been thinking about it too, the conversations that we're having wow. in private. Mm. Let's go see what happens. And we had been ministering girls, like the girls in LA around us. Mm. And, yeah. and they were just like, you guys are really helping us a lot. And we were like, we need to help everyone mm. wow. and get yeah. the word out. Yeah. yeah. I love that because it started from an organic 
healthy place. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of times, like, people will just start a podcast just for the sake of starting totally. a podcast. Like, it's, like, the yeah. thing to do. Yeah. And so a lot of people are like, I want to start a podcast. I'm like, okay, what do you want to talk about? They're like, I have no idea. Yeah. 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 I'm like, I'm not shaming you if you want to yeah. do that. But I'm no, like, totally. I think it's cool that you guys came from, like, okay, we have a message and a story to share. And yeah. God was already speaking to you. Mm-hmm. And you were already doing this off camera. Like, yeah. I, think I was going to say, matters yeah, most is offline. We talk about that. that all the time. Like who you are in private is who you're going to be in public. Exactly. And that's why it's so important mm-hmm. off camera, off social media to be abiding and to mm-hmm. be spending time in the word Absolutely. and having those so good. godly conversations because then it's like, oh, okay, put a camera on us. Like nothing's changing. It's not like we're flipping a light switch and all of a That's sudden, right. like we are reading the Bible. Exactly. I love that it started for y'all like off or camera. If people aren't already, you know, having that abiding time with Jesus offline, then yeah. you get in the public eye and you like freak out. Oh, totally. Like, yeah. I don't know how to handle this. This is too much. Yeah. It's like you've got to know yourself Absolutely. offline first and yeah. have a good relationship with God first offline. Otherwise, Absolutely. Pe- the comments will get to you. Like we all know mm-hmm. we've all yeah, been in the public eye for a bit and like those comments, they'll get you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I, what you said about how a lot of people just want to start a podcast. We know that podcasts now are like the most oversaturated yeah. mm-hmm. industry and I, me and Ari say it all the time, like, we never wanted to be podcast. We still don't even consider ourselves podcasters. We don't uh, consider, our, like, we have a podcast because yeah. we want to talk about Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Because we want to talk about the Bible. And so if, for some reason, Girls Gone Bible were to end, we would not be like, okay, we need a new idea for a podcast. Mm. We'd be like, all right, where are we going to do ministry next? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not about yeah. the podcast. Totally. We just, we, the podcast is a means in which to spread the gospel, and that's all that matters to us. Yeah. yeah. That's and so good. Yeah. So before we get more into this, um, for those watching, we are going to have two parts. So one will be on y'all's channel, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. then obviously this one on mine. And I want to get y'all's bios in a second. But also, my best friend, she recently released her second book. I (laughs) did. The love that everybody wants. Give us again, what is this book about? Who's it for? Why? Yeah. So I started writing this book single, and honestly, just to like, it was therapy for Mm -hmm. myself. And I was so frustrated and angry because it felt like everybody else was getting married. It felt like everybody else was where I wanted to be. And I was getting angry with the Lord. Like, when is, you know, this going to happen for me? And feeling like I was the problem. I was like, Mm -hmm. is there something wrong with me? I began to question myself, question my worth, question my value. And I remember it's when we were living together and I was in my room and I was crying one night. And it was when the Lord just spoke to me like, Maddie, you are looking for the right thing in all the wrong places. Like Mm -hmm. you're trying to find divinity and humanity. You're trying to find your purpose in a person. You're trying to find someone that will meet every need and longing of your heart. And that will make you feel less lonely and more whole. And only I can do that. Mm -hmm. And then I began to just like start thriving. I feel like then we started thriving in singleness. I mean, we were living, we literally could have had our own reality. (laughs) The Holy Spirit did be calling us out. We were thriving a little too much. But no, we were, I mean, we were just so content in the season of singleness that we were in. And we were surrounding ourselves with great community and just building healthy habits, like truly. Um, And so I'm super grateful for that. But I really got to write this this book from the vantage point of single and miserable to single and thriving to then (laughs) meeting Grant and you know, dating this person and evaluating, is this the person I want to spend the rest of my life with? To then engagement, to then marriage, I finished the book, you know, two months after being married and realized the same message applies even within the context of marriage. Yeah, yeah. But the whole heart behind it is just like what you're looking for is already yours and it's not found in a spouse, it's not found in a job, it's not found in fame, it's not found in money, it's not found in anything this world can give you, it's only found in Jesus. Mm-hmm. And really tackling like lots of different, you know, cultural norms and phrases and ideologies like you know pick me and drive before you buy and you know he completes me and all these different things and really tackling those ideas with biblical truths and principles while also sharing my own testimony you know I definitely failed a lot and learned a lot along the way and so I'm super vulnerable in this book it was really scary which you have pushed me so so much Janine has pushed me so much and just like being vulnerable and knowing that people connect with your weaknesses and people connect when you're like hey I I messed up like I was not perfect in this area and it's through failing that like the holy spirit met me where i was at and you know gave me the strength to keep going and called me out and called me higher and so i'm super honest and vulnerable in this book and 
you know, talk about all the things from, you know, finding confidence and identity Mm -hmm. um, in Christ to how to date in purity to what to look for in a spouse to how to do singleness well, you know, and all the things. So it's it's really fun. I'm I'm so excited. It's out. I'm so proud of you. I've been reading it. I'm like six chapters in and like it's so cool even like hearing new stories that I haven't heard from you. And yeah, your vulnerability is like it's so amazing because again, that's how people connect is like, oh, she's not Miss Perfect person. Like maybe all of us can portray online. It's like, no, we've all got our crap. We've got our things, our baggage, our stories. And it's just to show people like God redeems, God saves, God. This is the reason why you have a book is because God set you free and he showed you there's a better way. Absolutely. And I think that's also what we can all bond over Mm -hmm. is we were in darkness and then God Mm -hmm. was like, no, there's a better way. And then he opened our eyes. And that's why we all do what we do now because we want people to see there is a better way. A better way. Let me tell you, this book, (laughs) I'm not a reader. I don't read. (laughs) I'll read two chapters and then I'm over it. I started reading your book and I'm not kidding you, I finished it in two days. It was like God was speaking to me. You mm-hmm. had me laughing. You had me crying. You had me looking up to God. It mm-hmm. makes me want to cry as I say this, being like, thank you, Jesus. This book came into my life mm-hmm. at such a perfect time, and it is going to free so many mm-hmm. girls and women. Mm-hmm. You are an example to women, young girls, and thank you, Jesus, for you. because mm-hmm. For both th- of you, truly. For both of yeah. you guys. But this, yeah, this book is, it's so incredible and it helped me so much so I thank you that. you guys are the best i Nobody. did not ask you to say any of <laughs> no. this and y'all are amazing yeah, yeah. thank you, so it, it, you yeah it's just the holy spirit and i this book is saturated in prayer and janina stood by my side through a lot of it i'm just like hey let's pray over this thing and mm-hmm. i got off social media for a month and i was like hey i'm just gonna fast and pray yeah. and that when people read this book it's not my words that move them but it it's the holy spirit that moves them and it takes them to the word and the yeah. book that will change their life which is the bible yeah. Um, and so anyways, but yeah, Love it's it. fun. So proud of you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So I want to hear more of y'all stories because yeah. obviously yeah. we got dinner last night Yeah. and we went into it and like y'all stories are powerful. So good. Yeah. And they're so good. And I think like my followers have heard my story enough and we'll share mine on y'all's yeah, podcast, definitely. but yeah. I want to hear more of like y'all stories of like how you came to know Jesus. Why, yeah. mm-hmm. why Jesus? I grew up um, with a mom who's very religious. She loved Jesus. I told you guys a little bit about this. So I'm mm-hmm. Albanian. And um, back when my mom was a little girl, she was living in communism. And they weren't allowed to practice Christianity. They weren't allowed to have Bibles. So the only Jesus my mom knew was through her mom. Mm-hmm. And so my mom, she grew up, my mom um, just basically being with her siblings in a house, hush, hush, learning about Jesus, the, our Savior, the man who... Um, was sent by God to die for our sins and rose again three days later. and But that's the extent that she knew. She had never read the Bible or anything. Wow. So I grew up kind of in the same situation, going to Catholic school and all that, but I never read the Bible, but I knew Jesus, and I had a relationship with him, and I was really spiritual as a kid. And when I got into, like, middle school and high school, I started to act out a little bit. I started being an extremely rebellious kid. Mm -hmm. And when I was in high school, I started to um, engage in, like, drinking Mm -hmm. and going to parties and just, like, a lot of things at a young age. And then um, throughout that, I barely had a spiritual life because, as you guys know, alcohol will cloud your spiritual life. And it's (laughs) it's really hard to hear God when you are under the influence of anything yeah um and then so as i got older i would like be in and out of the faith in and out of my relationship with god and then when i got to college i started to experience extreme extreme anxiety Mm. i started to have panic attacks for the first time in my life Mm. i was having i told you guys last night fears phobias i couldn't drive on the highway because i thought i was going to get hurt i couldn't be on a fourth floor balcony because i thought i was going to be pushed off i don't know like wow. random yeah. fears we know what the enemy does like we know that the number one way that he keeps us down is through fear yep. mm-hmm. because when you are stuck in fear you cannot do anything for mm-hmm. the kingdom of god and so i was just plagued with all this is so much spiritual warfare but i did not know what was happening yeah to me. Mm-hmm. i thought that i was weird and at the time too it wasn't like as much of a conversation as it is now about mental health so i truly thought that i was alone in it mm-hmm. wow. and so the only thing 
I need to do, the only thing that made me feel better was self-medicating with alcohol. Mm. And I was never even like a big partier at all. I literally just wanted to feel better. I wanted mm. them to quiet down. Like I wanted the OCD, ex obsessive compulsive thoughts to, s to calm down. And so I started self-medicating with alcohol. And at that point, zero relationship with Jesus. Mm. I mean, I was gone. I was so far from him. I didn't know him. Um, the c people that I had around me were not good. I, it was just all about, I was so engulfed in darkness mm. that I, I, I mean, I like, I, f I s feel so sorry for myself during that mm. time because I was just, I was scared. I was fearful and I, I, all I wanted was to feel better. Mm. Mm. And then, so a God sent angel into my life. My mom met my pastor Socrates in Florida and he started calling me when I was in California and he would call me every day and I would tell him what was going on and he would just pray for me mm. and he would encourage me to pray for myself and he's the one who taught me how to really pray for myself. Because wow. mm. throughout my life, my mom covered me in prayer. Yeah. She prayed for me my whole life, but I never, I would call her to pray for me. I, I didn't know how to pray for myself. And then through Socrates ministering to me and like kind of discipling me, he would just be like, pray, pray. And I started praying relentlessly for myself wow. on my knees every day praying. And mm. it took a while. God didn't do it overnight. But on Thanksgiving 2019, I was 23 years old and I picked up my last drink, put it down and I never picked it up wow. again. Wow. Praise yeah. God. And it was so supernatural. Mm. It was so by the strength. It was certainly not by my strength or not m my might because I, anybody mm. else in the position that I was in would have had to go to therapy yeah. or a program or something, some type of help. I put it down and I, don't, I came into alignment with God that mm. it was done. It was done. Mm -hmm. He had been working on me. It didn't happen overnight because I was praying for a while. Mm. And then all of a sudden, when the time was right, when I was ready, when it was right for him, we came into agreement and I stopped. And then it was like for the next year, I was healing. My body was healing. My mind was healing. My spiritual life was like coming alive again. And I developed a beautiful relationship with Jesus. And he was pursuing me so hard. I was listening to sermons. I was listening to worship music. I started journaling to Jesus all of a sudden. Like mm -hmm. I would just be like, dear Jesus, all day, just talking to him all day. And then, but when my life really changed was when I went into like a total isolation season. I went through a breakup. Um, and it was the it's always the breakup. It's I always the well, breakup. Listen, well, yeah, glow, up, glow ups in <laughs> Jesus name, <laughs> yeah, you know? <laughs> Well, I was, it was the first time because I was with somebody for two years and I, I love the guy, but it wasn't, I, I knew it wasn't the one and it was the first time mm -hmm. that I, because I had heard God's voice my whole life, but I wasn't always obedient to it. And mm. I didn't even necessarily know it was God's voice. Yeah. I thought maybe it was my parents' voice in my head totally. or just like my moral compass telling me what to do. But it was the first time that I actively went against my flesh went against my own will to pursue God's. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time where I said, I'm going to go completely against what is familiar and comfortable and mm. good for me, r what I think is good for me, and I'm going to do what you're asking me to do, and I'm going to lay it down. So good. I laid it down, year of isolation. I was living in my new place for the first time, living alone, living in my new place. And I, I told you guys last night, I had a Bible next to my bed, and I loved it. I didn't know what was inside, but <laughs> I loved it. I held it in such it high cute. regard. Yeah. I would, like, touch it sometimes, like, I love you, Jesus. <laughs> I thought that was, that was I'm enough. not going to read about yeah, you, but exactly. I love you. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't even know, like, I didn't know the yeah. word. I didn't know what was in it. And I knew the gospel by hearing it and by being in a Catholic church, mm -hmm. you know? And then one day I finally opened the Bible and I, I had gotten a study Bible and I opened it and I opened it to John. And mm. for the first <laughs> time love. in my life, the veil was torn down. Mm. My eyes were open. I saw the truth. <laughs> and in an instant, yeah. it was like truly in an instant, I loved God, I loved people, and mm. I loved the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I could never be the same again. Yep. And I was reading throughout John, and I, and I, I, f I remember feeling like my whole life, N in the best way possible was a lie. Everything that I thought mm. I knew was a lie mm. and I had the truth in front of me. I had come home to the truth. I was free and I was like just reading all throughout, the, uh, just reading the gospel for the first time being like, for God so loved the world, he sent his only son that we should not perish but have everlasting mm. life. And then when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life and nobody gets to the Father except yep. through me. And I had finally made sense that he is the only way. Christianity yep. is the yep. only way. Everything else that we think it is not the yep. way, and you will Amen. not get there mm. except through Jesus. Yeah. 
And then when he says the truth will set you free, I finally put it together that yep. Jesus, the word, God, he is the truth. This is why I'm free. This is why I feel free because I've received him mm -hmm. in this way. And I just reading that's why we're so passionate about the bible and why we call it yeah. girls gone bible yeah. because so good you can't i can't ever go back to not reading the mm -hmm. word it's my life mm -hmm. i go one day without reading the word and it is oh yeah very messed up yeah. Yeah. I know we were talking about, about that earlier i'm like my husband right. and i oh uh, we can't even talk without reading being in our word first i'm a rump i am no. mean <laughs> i'm selfish yeah. i'm like i Impatient. need Jesus. i feel like you're moody i'm mean yeah yeah mean. you're <laughs> moody you're an emotional one i moody yeah and moody mean. and mean <laughs> Yeah. Who are you without Jesus? Moody and mean. Literally. It's yeah. so true. God, that's the power of the Bible. Yeah. And it's just so cool because, you know, it really took like one person in your life. Like yeah. that's the power of one person. Mm -hmm. Like imagine if we were that one person for somebody mm -hmm. in our lives. Like Socrates. I love yeah. that name, by the way. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> so like yeah. So whatever you say. Like, yes. Socrates. <laughs> but like he prayed for you and he taught you how to pray. And like yeah. I had a mentor in my life do that for me. And it takes one person yeah. to open your eyes, open your heart. And then they point you to the Bible. And I mean, I've just seen so many stories because the mm -hmm. Bible is powerful. They read the Bible and their eyes are, are open. Their, the veil has been torn, whatever. Yeah. And they're yeah. like, oh, my gosh. And God reveals himself to the person in the Bible because it mm. says the Bible is alive and active yep. today. And it is. It still will. Yeah. It, it, it is. It always will be. And so it's just really cool. And you're so like, I know, you're, there's something about her, right? She's mm -hmm. so yeah. angelic and like oh at peace and you're so calm. And like, yeah. I always felt that energy through you guys on your podcast. Mm -hmm. You guys just, you just love Jesus. And yeah. like, despite what anybody says, the comments, whatever, like, we are sitting with you guys in the flesh and we yeah. know you guys love Jesus. You carry the you Holy Spirit. You hunger and thirst for righteousness. Mm -hmm. Like truly, I think of that, you know, Matthew 5 verse. It's like, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for righteousness, for they will be filled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you see that. Like, you guys are filled. Like, Thank you are you filled. So You're not striving or searching or proving or trying to find that in something else. You're like, he has fully met mm -hmm. every need and every desire and he set me free. And it's just so beautiful. It's beautiful mm -hmm. to see. It, it's just like even like we went home and like we were just like talking. It's like encouraging to just like yeah. see two people just hungry for more yeah. of Jesus. Like even asking us questions like, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And I love that about yeah. you guys. Yeah. Like you want to grow and you're hungry to like be the best that you can be in yeah. Jesus. And I just love yeah. that. We, so good. Uh, we, I mean, yeah, we love him so much. There's no <laughs> denying that. <laughs> we, we're, I think too. That's why, like, with with the pot, we're just like we're we learning. know. Yeah, and we just know that the basis of it is how much we love Jesus. Yeah. And so after that, we're not because we when we started it, we were so it was a lot. It was very heavy. Mm -hmm. Thank God we have each mm -hmm. other because I told Ari the other day like this would feel really really heavy if i was alone but mm -hmm. because i have you totally it's less that i have to carry I love you know so much. we cry all day together <laughs> <laughs> we cry that's all we do we just cry no, and read the bible <laughs> yeah no seriously and so but like we yeah. and so but because it's all about jesus it's like i don't like who i don't as long as i'm doing what i need to do and actively pursuing jesus all day every day which is truly what we do like the podcast will take care of itself yeah. we Amen. don't do anything for it yeah. we don't we don't try yeah. we don't think we don't totally. like plan we don't plan literally the week of we we pray and we say jesus like mm -hmm. put it on our mm -hmm. hearts what do you want us to talk about and mm -hmm. we'll think of something identity fear prayer you know what i yeah. mean and yeah. then he'll give us the scripture to read and mm. yeah so good. yeah letting the lord just anoint it and yeah carry so it. good That's so good thank you for sharing of course. yeah okay so Hero. yeah I, so i would say that i always loved god but mm. the problem was is i was so dependent upon myself that yeah. i didn't know him I didn't mm. grow up in a Christian family, mm. so I didn't know to lean on him or the ho how the Holy Spirit dwells within you and can help you and free you. And so I would say that I lived my life very with, with an emptiness inside of me. I had chronic depression. Mm. I was lost, and I had put my identity into everything but God. Mm -hmm. And so God had brought me through a season where I was completely heartbroken to mm. the point where I couldn't even go from the bed to the shower. I was completely isolated, had no identity, no purpose. I just was, I was lost. Mm. And so I just remember going into this church and getting on my hands and knees and just bleeding out everything mm. and being like, God, I hate this. Mm. Why is this happening? Like, I am so lost. And I just could hear the Lord being like, knowing why this is going to happen isn't going to change you, but mm. knowing me will. Wow. wow. Yeah. Amen. That's a bar. <laughs> and, um, 
and yeah and in that moment because it, it was a course of like five months where I just was struggling and trying to depend on myself and get mm. through it and the thoughts were just so overbearing and I couldn't handle it anymore like yeah. truly I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel mm. and I didn't wow. think I was going to make it through and my family and friends didn't think I was going to make it through either no I it really there were moments that I was really concerned yeah it was life. it was a very scary time but when I saw what God was doing in my life, when I finally submitted to him, I knew he's a God of compassion. Mm -hmm. And so I know I knew I just had to be still. And I knew and I just want to express, too, that when I finally submitted to him, it wasn't that he took the pain away. Mm -hmm. It was so crucial that he kept me in that pain because it truly did develop me into the woman that I am. And I wouldn't be able to sit here and be vulnerable and speak my truth. Mm -hmm. And it really helped me find him. He didn't get me through the pain, but he was with me through it. Mm -hmm. right. And that, and in those moments, that's truly when I found him. Mm -hmm. And it freed me. He has changed my life. Mm -hmm. And that's why I am so relentless with helping girls and people because I was someone who knew nothing about mm -hmm. the Bible. I knew nothing about God. Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up. I, I mean, my whole life, I'm just like trying to get through everything on my own. I can do it. I can get through this. So I lived a life of truly being just feeling so empty and depressed and lost. Mm -hmm. And I was like, is this it? Is yeah. this what my life is going to be mm -hmm. like? Yeah. I mean, this can't be it, right? And um, when I when I found God and found that our identity is in him and, and not my whole life, I'm like putting my identity into men, into, mm -hmm. into my career. And God, he changed my life and mm -hmm. I just love him so much. Amen. He changed yeah. my life, you guys. And yeah, that's my story. It's so good. Yeah. Love I love yeah. your vulnerability inspires me. Thank you yeah. so much. Like, it inspires so, me. No, it truly. Does. It's so beautiful. Like you, I mean, you were joking earlier about that she wears her heart on her sleeve, but yeah. I'm just like, that is what is going to connect with so many people yeah. and so many people that are listening right now mm -hmm. that like are just in that really dark place that don't feel the light at the end of the tunnel and are truly asking like, is there more to life? Like, yeah. I don't know if I can do this anymore. Yeah. Like I, I'm sure there are many listening who have had suicidal thoughts or yeah. in such deep depression yeah. that feel hopeless. Yeah. And like just hearing, like I think about that revelation verse, it's like we overcome by the power of the blood and by the word of our testimony. Yep. It's by the blood of Jesus. And it's by the word of our testimony mm -hmm. that people experience freedom and overcome the darkness and the lies of the enemy. And I think sharing our story, and sharing our testimonies like bring yeah. true freedom to people Absolutely. and so thank you all so much for yeah and I just remember us. being in church and being like God who do you want me to be where do you want me to go like what do you want from me and I had to be so patient and I love in your book like the mm. the waiting the yeah. way you have to be patient and wait and I just prayed for I, what I wanted I prayed for the friendships shortly after that he brought me my best friend who I call my angel she saved oh, my oh, life so she sweet. saved my life and she introduced me to the Bible and then we started reading Bible together oh. and that what you said earlier how the Bible changed your life that is the truth and yeah. that is what freed me yeah. Yeah. Amen. I that love that you spoke to me. that because I think one of the biggest questions like I at least get asked and I'm sure you do too mm -hmm. like people see Janine and I together all the time and they're like where do I find like a best friend like yeah. that like yeah. how do I find you know someone that will challenge me in the word and call me higher and push me closer to Jesus and I think a lot of people are really hungry for that yeah, yeah. people ask us people all the need time it. yeah yeah, and I think there's an epidemic of loneliness and yes. isolation. I mean, I was isolated for a good bit. I feel like I relate to y'all stories. I have so many different, like, segments where I'm like, oh, I felt that, felt I that know. too. I like, yeah. that's how God works. But God also, mm -hmm. like, I know the enemy can isolate you, but God can use isolation totally. a lot. It's like, it's in those lonely moments. Um, you can meet God so much in the loneliness because, yeah. like, you're by yourself and then it's just you and your Bible. And you're like, God, who are you? I had mm -hmm. an exact moment lived alone, went through a really bad breakup, same thing. And that was when the Lord just spoke to me. And then I met Maddie shortly after that. Yeah. And like, I think those kingdom friendships are, pe are people that you've got to pray for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, but sometimes God just blesses you with them. Like I didn't even know I needed a Maddie in my life mm -hmm. until God was like, here you go. You yeah. need a Maddie. Yeah. And I'm sure you guys have this similar story of like, you didn't know it until you got it. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's so funny. is So for a while I had been walking with God kind of, alone like I'm always I go to church like three times a week like I'll go anywhere mm -hmm. that they're preaching the Bible like I yeah. don't care um but for a long time I had only friends that wanted to be believers were kind of believers mm -hmm. I have so many friends of different religions and and who are non-believers but 
I felt like every friend that I had, I was always pouring into. I didn't necessarily f- yeah. feel like I had a friend, like a girl my age, like one of my girlfriends to pour into me. I have my mom, I have my pastors, mm-hmm. I have mentors, but like I didn't really have anyone that I felt could pour into me. And I thought that that was okay. I was like, that's okay. That's I have enough to give other people that mm-hmm. I don't really need anybody mm-hmm. to do that for me. I had no idea that I needed Ari. Yeah. And even if she wasn't like necessarily like, you know, ahead of me in the faith or whatever, like she is able to, I always say this because Ari is so good at expressing herself and mm. she so wears her heart on her sleeve. I tend to like suffer in silence. Mm. I will like, we talked about it a little yeah. bit. Maddie, like, yep. we, ha- yeah. we, we will oftentimes pretend like everything is okay because yeah. we want it. But for me, at least like I want it to be okay. So you want to have that, that image and you want other people to see you as that, but it's so true. Like shame spreads yeah. in secrecy yeah. and sin festers in isolation. And, yeah. and when you keep things in the dark, but Absolutely. we, but we lie to ourselves and tell ourselves like we can't let anybody in. We can't tell people. Yeah. Yeah, I just yeah, my, I I just like I want to be I want to be happy so bad sometimes. Yeah. And I'm like I'm just gonna I'm gonna push I'm gonna like basically put it in a in a box, put it over here, and like live outside of it. Like yeah. I'm not even yeah. gonna touch it. And um, but Ari's the only person, and I can fool everybody. Like yeah. I really can. Ari's <laughs> the one person who will look at me and yep. be like, "What's up?" Yep. <laughs> yeah, you guys. Yeah, Maddie's like, "How are you?" And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah." Instantly <laughs> last night, I'm like, "How's your heart?" And she's like, "Well, how am I? How is my heart?" <laughs> I don't know. She's like, "I don't that. know." Like, wait, let me have a second. Yeah. That is weird. But yeah, when you, you need have those people. Like genuinely be like, "Yeah, how are you?" Yeah, she. Just everyone's like, "How are you?" And you're like, "I'm good." Like, okay, good. Bye. Yeah. And, and then like, the follow up of like, "How's your heart?" Okay why like why right. why why Challenging. are you good we've, like we've why are you Jenny, not I good like. yeah he's like why like, yeah i don't know <laughs> she's yeah. like keep trying to get to the yeah. root into the root into the root it's, it's so like, important yeah. and it's important too because i i during that time i was meeting friends but they thought i was losing my mind because they weren't <laughs> mm, they <that's> weren't so <laughs> christian so yeah. i just kept praying please bring me a godly friend like myself mm. and it's so important to have godly friendships that you can pray for that when you're yeah. down mm. you can say hey can we just pray for each other can we just read the word together it's mm. so important to have oh those gosh, godly yeah, friendships yeah james yeah. five sixteen. i yeah. mean confess literally confess and pray with each other that's how we experience healing like yeah. how crazy is that that scripture literally tells us like pray and confess to one another and that is where you experience yeah. healing yeah. Yes. and it's so true it's like when you bring things into the light and you find another godly you know believer to be like hey pray over me that is where truly we start feeling and experiencing healing mm-hmm. and I, I think that's one of the most powerful things about having a God fearing, you know, friend and mm-hmm. believer is just like, man, accountability, but also yeah. a safe yes. place for confession yeah. uh-huh. of like, Absolutely. hey, I'm believing this lie right now. Like I'll literally yeah. just text Janine sometimes and be like, hey, um, I'm believing this lie. And she's like, why are you believing this lie? Where yeah. did it where did it come from? And then she'll just literally call me and be like, let me pray over you. Mm. And I just think that's so powerful to like even before it turns into like a sin or yeah. a belief, it's like even at the thought level of being like here's a thought that I'm having yeah. and I'm going to confess it to you and like pray over me. Yeah, when yeah. I confessed something to you last night and she yeah. literally made me shake hands with her. She's like you're never doing that again. Yeah. Look at me in the face and shake my hand. I was like, okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's so, so good. good. Really. That's so good. But like I think it was just going to say like okay, I think there's a moment where you can be isolated with the Lord, yeah. but you can't stay there. Yeah. Yes. So I think it's like important to have your quiet times and have moments with the Lord where you're really just like God, I need you because I think that is the tough part about being the Christian female or just a Christian in general is you're going to have to shed some people. Yeah. And like I've shed people. I'm sure we've all been through that. And it's a weird balance of like, I love them. I'm not trying to be mean and judgmental, but I need to be challenged. I need to be called higher. Mm -hmm. And so it's like kind of going into like a hiding for a bit and then eventually being like, okay, God, I need people. I need someone to like pull me out of this and then now do this life with me which is what it seems like we've all found which is so amazing because you can't stay in isolation like there's no way we can continue to grow do this life without accountability friendships people calling us higher calling us out like it is literally make or break yeah i always say god wants nothing more for us to have friendships Mm -hmm. like we are called to be in communion with people so yeah i honestly just pray pray for friendships yeah. like pray i was so relentless with prayer with my mm. friendships that was the number one thing i needed and he brought me it so fast and mm. we have the funniest story of meeting as oh well. yeah we didn't hear this yesterday it was okay so <laughs> we were we met on a job we met on a modeling job and i take it away what were you go it was ari's birthday oh yeah we um we were both at a job it was my birthday i was down bad 
I mean, I was getting my makeup done and I had cried it off four times. Oh, and man. I was just like, I couldn't even get through it. And I just had a mental breakdown. <laughs> Thank God I did, because if I wasn't as vulnerable as I was, I don't think that we would have connected yeah. like mm. we did. I mean, so I walked in that day and I saw and I saw Ari sitting and she was and I saw her crying and I saw her not well. And I like I'm I'm a people person, but I'm also like not that extroverted. Like I don't <laughs> typically just go talk to random people, but I saw her crying. So I went and I don't know why. Obviously, the whole Holy Spirit was like, go talk to this mm. girl. So I went and I sat next to her and I was like, no, you didn't even say anything. I'm sitting there and I feel someone take my hand Aww. as I'm so Aww. as I'm weeping oh, in my so in my sweet. hand. And I look over and she's holding my hand and I I had to double look at her. Cry. I know, I'm yeah. like, oh my God, hold my hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold mine right now. Like, should we hold this? Because you oh don't you don't you don't find that in no. LA. And so I, I look over with like tears <laughs> drilling down my eyes. And she just looks at me. She doesn't even ask me what my name is. And she was like, I don't know you, but we're going to get through this together. <gasps> and, I, and, I, and, I do, and, I, and I'm and I thinking to myself, is this an angel? Or is this yeah. <laughs> real life right She's now? She's like poking her. <laughs> are you real? Are you, you disappear? <laughs> Especially and in the knew. industry y'all are yeah. in. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, for people that don't know, you guys are both actresses. Yeah. And you're in Hollywood. You still live in L.A. Yeah. And I'm sure that's very difficult. You know, I lived out there, but I wasn't, like, in it, in it, mm. like y'all. Yeah, the thing about us is like we are I we're in the industry but we're not in the scene. We at live all. in a bubble. We we yeah. live in a <laughs> bubble of us and a few other Christian friends honestly and like we don't we don't go out. We don't really mm -hmm. do. So we're not necessarily in the scene but we've se we have been. Yeah. We've seen a lot. And yeah. it's tough even driving around the streets of LA. The yeah, energy we're it's like really tired and <laughs> Yeah, it's dark. It's it's yeah. a little scary and you really um, like how you said earlier, like you can't live in an isolation mm -hmm. forever. And mm -hmm. I know when I went through my isolation period, it's because I had a lot to break off. God had a lot of people to remove from my yeah. life. Mm. And I was always somebody who really struggled letting go of people. Like I come from a family and a culture where we're ride or die. Mm. Like we yeah. don't let go. We don't give up. And while that's beautiful, it's not realistic. And mm. I don't think it's biblical either. Yeah, like healthy. God, yeah. no. Um, and so when I really stepped into my walk with God, I really had to start letting people go. Mm. And um, what's the beautiful thing about living with God and like working with the Holy Spirit is that I've been able to let go of friendships very kindly and in a way that doesn't end up in flames or doesn't mm. end up in drama or mm. anything bad. That's I great. think sometimes just there's like a natural separation that will happen when you let God do his work within yeah. your relationships yeah. that doesn't have to be dramatic mm -hmm. or have tension or anything like that. Um, and I've gotten really content that like, I, I love so many people and I have so many friends. I don't hang out with that many people on a regular basis. One I, I'm just I'm too busy with God like we are so like <laughs> I'm yeah, too busy yeah. with God sure. like that's God gonna be my new bio I'm schedule. too busy with God so don't even bother <laughs> that I just like I I don't necessarily have time for things that are not godly like yeah. I can't compromise my totally. time to like entertain things that I know aren't good for me and aren't good for my relationship with we God. talk a yeah. lot about that we're like we don't have anything in common now we go to that's dinner so true though it's yeah. yeah you have to be honest about it because when you really get in the faith like you will yeah. not have a there's lot of a things in natural common. drift that just happens and yeah. it sucks when you feel it because yeah. Yeah. I have people in my life where I'm like ooh, like we used to be besties yeah. or like people that you know you would party with or whatever and then you grow they they grow or maybe they're stagnant and you just start to feel this mm -hmm. and you're like I can't do anything about this like yeah. I'm trying to change my life and yeah. grow my faith and like yeah. if they're not there's just going to be a natural rift and it's mm -hmm. true it's not something to like you know condemn them about and it's no. hopefully it's it's hopefully a way that they feel called higher or convicted or like okay obviously they're going on a better path like I want that yeah. and that's kind of the goal you know mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah but it's hard when you feel that rift sometimes because you're yeah. like you don't want to make them feel like I'm better than you because mm -hmm. that's not what we're saying yeah. yeah but they'll sometimes maybe perceive it as that and you're yeah. like no like I'm doing this because like I feel called to like yeah. I'm supposed to do this yeah. So yeah yeah that's tough I think there's definitely a way to go about things that's really com be having so much compassion for people mm -hmm. that they don't feel judged by you, but also being truthful to where they feel inspired. Mm -hmm. I think it's asking God for wisdom and for totally. just his spirit to, f because I like, while the spirit of God will offend people, I also think it will inspire yeah, so absolutely. many people. So whenever I am in a situation where I don't want the other person to feel judged, I just ask God to come in and I lead with kindness. And I think 
you just have to have an air about you that isn't judgmental yeah. and yeah. people you know and like you can reach people better right. that way it's a beautiful thing I've had the same friends since I was just a kid and when they saw how much God was moving in my life it's brought them all to God yeah. and it is amazing. the most is amazing, beautiful yeah. God. thing yeah mm. it's beautiful how you can bring people to God well yeah. that's the best way to spread the gospel yeah not by s- um, you know just sitting there and reciting scripture to people it's living in living a way yeah that and they're obey the you. commands that you're yeah. reading about yeah, i think exactly. that's the thing is like there's so many people and we all can be like hypocritical in our own, own ways course. because we're not perfect mm-hmm. but i do think that there are so many you know people who call themselves christians that live a totally different lifestyle yeah. and i think yep. it's confusing to other people like yeah. i know of a lot of people that are like i'm not religious i'm not i'm not into the faith and i'll ask why i'll be like you know why and it always goes goes back down to like church hurt or people yeah. mm-hmm. that really misled them or showed them you know and so it's just like it's hard and I think too when we're asking questions I love that you kind of spoke to this but just like not compromising yeah um because when I look at our culture today I'm just like there's so many people that are just like constantly compromising you know Absolutely. their faith or their values or even like hanging around people that they shouldn't be hanging around like right. what was something that like for y'all was like has been so huge and just not compromising first of all i'll say this it is being a christian and really living right is the hardest thing i've ever had to do Mm -hmm. if i'm being completely vulnerable and honest here Mm -hmm. my walk with god has been nothing it is not an easy ride Mm -hmm. and i am still learning every single day But yes, you really do have to live right. You cannot have one foot in and one foot out. Mm. And the conviction that I feel Mm. Mm -hmm. is like, whoa. And it's a good thing. I mean, you and I were talking about this last night. It's a beautiful thing. And Mm -hmm. I love what you say in your book. You don't feel shame. You Mm -hmm. repent it, you say Mm -hmm. it, and you move on. That touched me in a way because I'm someone who lives with a lot of shame when I do wrong. I can't Mm -hmm. let it go. And I sit there, and it's only going to keep you in chains, like you said in your book. And so, but yeah, you... It's really about living right and like doing right by God. Mm. And it's been such a walk with you yeah. and I. Yeah. Every day we're learning and yeah. w- with our photos and, and, and our past and, and the sins. And mm. and that's why I give people grace because it, it is hard, especially when you didn't grow up as a Christian. You're, yeah, you're yeah. like learning yeah, and some things totally. I'll do and I'll be like, oh, oh my gosh, like I, I did that, but I didn't know. And I didn't know. Yeah. It's just you you just every day you just you try harder and harder and keep your eyes on God and yeah. yeah. I just want to speak to that really fast cuz yeah. I love that you mentioned yeah. that like it's it wasn't easy for you yeah. because mm-hmm. I think that is something that's unspoken that not a lot of people talk yeah. about because yeah. you know we we see the other side of like following Jesus is so amazing mm-hmm. and it is it is literally the best thing Truly. I've ever done in my yeah. life. But anyone would be lying if this is not a difficult path. And like yeah. God never said it would be easy yeah, anyway. That's right. Yeah, like it's what is the what is the verse? It's like pick up your cross and yeah, deny, deny yourself, yourself and follow me. It's literally we're in a spiritual battle. Our flesh and our spirits are at war with each other. It's Romans seven of like, why do I do the things I don't want to do? We do yeah. them over and over and over. I want to do the right thing, but I don't know how to. Yeah. But like when you die to flesh, you abide in Jesus and you allow the Holy Spirit. He is the reason why we're able to do this. Like, none of us could do this in our own strength. That's There's right. absolutely no way in heck I could do this. But literally through the grace of God and his Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. that is why we can do this. But mm-hmm. I like your vulnerability because yeah, totally. not a lot of people hear that side of, like, this is hard. And it, it is, is hard. hard. Maddie and I talk about this all yeah. the time. We text each other all the time. Like, Maddie, I'm, like, being so tempted. I want to mm-hmm. go do this. And she's like, you better not. Yeah. Yeah, but she calls yeah. me and she helps me because yeah. – I mean, my flesh is like cave, 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 like compromise and friends and the Holy Spirit's like, nope, don't do it. Same. Yeah. 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 That's why scripture says we do not have a high priest that cannot sympathize with us Mm -hmm. for in all points. He was tempted, Mm -hmm. though without sin, but he was tempted. He understands us. He has compassion for us. I think um, what really helps with the compromising of your values and your beliefs is knowing why you believe what you Mm -hmm. believe. Mm -hmm. Because for a long time, I would really go back on the things that I thought I believed because I didn't understand why I thought I couldn't do this and this and that because you know the Christian said that I can't and church Mm -hmm. said that I can't but it was until I realized that sin the wages of sin are death death, Mm. you like I sin separates us from God that's right that's the problem it's not because God thinks we're bad people and we're bad girls and we're bad this and we're whatever it's because it separates us Mm -hmm. from him and, and we want to live a life that's as close to God as humanly possible so that when we get to heaven 
-hmm. we can live the way that we're supposed to but on earth like we want to be close to him and every time I know what helps me is that when I do fall into sin when Mm -hmm. I do give into temptation and I feel that shame and I feel that guilt and I feel that separation from God that feels like hell Mm -hmm. that's what it feels Mm -hmm. like I that just it's it's always a reminder I am good about not having too much shame Mm -hmm. I have a healthy I have like I have I repent and I do what I need to do and I get right with God but I don't let it fester because all he wants is for me to come back into his presence Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know I don't need to stay in that situation I don't need to stay in that guilt because shame all it does is hold you back and hold you down and shame will actually keep you in the dark yeah and Mm -hmm. it'll keep you sinning a lot of people who are addicted to drugs or in bad situations they never get out because they feel what's the point they have so much shame that it's like who am i to even think that i can get Mm -hmm. out of this bad Mm -hmm. situation and that's all the enemy speaking to you and keeping you there but that's why god says like i i I am the way the truth and the life and i will set you free yeah Yeah. you know what i mean good i heard this um acronym for shame once and it stands for self-hatred at my expense Mm -hmm. yes and i was like man that's so powerful because that's what it is yeah but if you go even all the way back to the very beginning of time genesis it's like, what did the, like, how did it all start? It all went down with a lie and a deception from the enemy, yeah. which then gave birth to sin, which then gave birth to shame. Yes. And you see this pattern of like, it starts with a lie. It starts with a temptation. It starts with this deception. Hey, there's good outside of God. Yeah. Hey, there's freedom in the world. Hey, you can find your identity in worldly things. Yep. And it's like, you fall for that lie. You give into sin. And then it doesn't, it doesn't lead to freedom. It doesn't lead to God. liberation. It doesn't lead to confidence. It doesn't lead to identity or healthy relationships. It only leads to shame. It only leads to hiding and covering up. And now this innocence has been stolen and now you feel separated from God and people. And I think that's why it is so important to talk about because man, having like abiding in God's word and doing life in community will help you fight off that initial state when those lies come and those temptations come. It's like, you got to be abiding in the word daily, like not just like, Oh, a church service on Sunday. It's like daily abiding. And I love like, you're so passionate about abide, like your abide tribe, abide. It's like you got to be abiding because as John 15, five talks about, like if you remain in me, like if if you apart from me, you can do nothing. But like in me, like you can bear fruit, like you can do all things. And it's like you're only going to find what you're looking for in him. Truly. Well, the thing I think the harsh reality is like there's literally a fight for our souls Mm -hmm. every single day in the spiritual realm. We don't see it. We may not feel it, but like. We scroll on Instagram or TikTok and like we're getting Open fed so many things. Yeah. We're getting totally. fed lies and be this way, act this way, talk this way, dress this way, do this, cuss this, watch this music. Yep. Like we're feeding all these things, our, these images, these videos, these lyrics, yeah. and it's affecting our spirits whether so we holy, want yeah. to admit mm-hmm. it or not. I think so many people, they're like, no, I just listen to the rhythm. I just like the beat. Yeah. And I'm like, no, girl, no, no. you're putting messages in yeah. your brain. Yeah. And there's a fight for us. And that's why it's like, it is so important to put on the armor of God, Ephesians mm-hmm. 6, every day. Every because day. Yeah. This is a battle. And we, and I'm not trying to scare people, but like, we look what's happening in the world. Like, this is getting real. Mm-hmm. Like, Jesus is coming back. He's coming back for his bride. Yeah. We're living a revelation. We're re- living out the Bible. And like, we can't know how to armor up, how to fight back, how to yeah. stand up for truth. And we don't know where is the truth. How yeah. do we fight back? What is yeah. the armor? of God like the Bible is everything it is so it is so pivotal in this moment because like Jesus is coming back totally like we've got to be ready we got to be armored up and the enemy is real and I knew nothing about the enemy before I met Angela I knew nothing about rebuking the enemy you know and I I dealt with such severe depression I truly didn't think I was ever going to come out of it and I can tell you that I have a peace in my heart that Mm. I can't even explain because I wear the word of God every Mm -hmm. day and I rebuke the enemy and when I get those really bad intrusive thoughts I I know what to do now now that Mm -hmm. I know that the enemy doesn't have power over us and it's important to know that it's important to know that he doesn't have power but scripture does say that we have an enemy the Mm -hmm. devil and he prowls around like a roaring Roaring lion looking for who he could devour and so Mm -hmm. stand firm in the faith because we have brothers all around us going through the same thing that we are it's real it's all the time and we churches a lot of churches 
in LA, for example, you guys, you've been, been there, to yeah. some, there's <laughs> yeah. a lot of them that um, deny the supernatural for mm. some reason. And yes, that's a thing. It is, I it is. It. And I think Love that LA. it's because, I don't know, maybe it's easier to digest. I don't know, but I'm really passionate about bringing the supernatural back into church because we have, su- we are spiritual beings mm-hmm. and we all have such an inclination towards the spiritual. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. why there's the rise of new age and totally. tarot cards. Everyone's yeah. hungry Chris, for it. Of course, our bodies we are We were made for eternity. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. were made yeah. for eternity. And so by the church denying it, they're denying Jesus. Absolutely. They're denying the gospel. If the spirit of God raised Jesus from the dead, w- that and that spirit lives within us. Mm-hmm. Like, it, we're pretty spiritual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Better not ignore it because yeah. there's yeah. a whole spiritual realm, a yeah. battle happening. Totally. Fighting over your souls. And I love exactly. that you spoke to that um, Second Peter verse of, like, the enemy prowling around like a roaring lion. But I love that it says looking for someone. Mm-hmm. It doesn't say some group or some friendship or yeah. So yeah. it says someone mm-hmm. and I think that's why isolation is dangerous yes. like even taking it again back to Genesis how did the enemy come after Eve like when she was alone yes. when she was by herself that's and right. I think that's why it is so 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 important to do life with godly community do yeah. life with people Absolutely. because man it is like the enemy is afraid to come after you when you're in a pack like when yeah. you when you have your people like mm-hmm. It, you got you got more protection around you, yeah. but it's it's dangerous to be trying to fight, you know, in the spiritual realm by yourself. Yeah, yeah. he's so sneaky. Yeah, he's, he's so sneaky. He's so deceitful. He always gives a half truth or mm-hmm. a compromise or a little lie or a little like yep. just try this or don't you don't you want to go back to that or don't you remember when that was really fun? And I, I remember like in my story, like I'm just relating to yours of like I think you mentioned this earlier how you um you thought like the church was just trying to like put all these rules on you and religion and it's just so crazy because like when i i mean i grew up christian and i kind of like did my own thing for a good bit there and i look back to that and i'm like was i even happy Mm -hmm. like how how was i actually i was miserable yeah i had like eating disorders i was very unhealthy i was sad i was i mean all the things that you guys mentioned and i'm like that was me like being a quote-unquote christian like Mm -hmm. i would profess christ online behind the scenes did not act like it at all and I look and I'm like, I was not happy. I was mm-hmm. not joyful. I did not like myself. The enemy constantly was like working in my life and I allowed him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like what you were saying in the Bible verse, like the enemy prowls around like a lion, but also like we have the power to shut the door. That's mm-hmm. right. Like yeah. what doors are we leaving open that allows him to yeah. prowl around? Because we have the power to say no in Jesus's name yeah. or we can say, yes, enemy, come on in, do whatever you want. And that's why it's, again, it's so important of Mm -hmm. what are we consuming? What doors are we leaving open? How are we allowing him to crawl around? And I love what you said about this. You open doors in social media with your music, like where you're surrounding yourself with in nightclubs, like you're opening that door to the enemy. And I never knew that before. I, I will say music is something that I only this year really really uh, the lord was speaking to i remember so i went to a conference last year and it was the first time that i really ever not the first time but it was the first time that i had like an unbearable conviction that i could not get over i leave the it's two day conference i'm there all day i am so on fire for (laughs) jesus i have the spirit of god living through me and i get into the car and i turn and it just like turns on the radio a cardi b song comes on I, my, I go, oh my God, <laughs> like my spirit, I couldn't hear it. Yeah. I was so sensitive yeah. to it. just a well, second of it. Totally. I barely heard it. Yeah. And then I had another moment um, a couple months later where I was driving in the car and I was, back then I would be like, all right, I'm going to do half worship, half Rap, we did that. I yeah, I, I tried I that love, too. Yeah, I love. Rap yeah, music. I'm like Drake and Elevation. We got it, God. I He's like, Malone. no. <laughs> no truly. And I was like, and I had a moment where I was listening to some hip hop. I don't know what it was, but I was driving, and I heard God be like, "Turn it off." Mm. And I was like, no, no, no. And I'm like trying to ignore it. And I would mm, always totally. do that. I would yep. try to ignore yeah. it because I just wanted to listen to the music. And then he's like, turn it off. And I'm like, okay. I put on a worship song and I hear him go, turn it all off. Mm. Silence. And I'm like, okay. So I turn off the music and all I hear is, this is going to be the death of you. Mm. You can sit here all day long praying, reading the Bible, doing all that you do. And the second you get in the car and you turn this music off, on it all goes out the window and you're it's just it's all gone you're you're filling yourself up with me and then immediately filling yourself up with this garbage Mm. Mm. that's so convicting that's so good seriously and then i and then from that moment on i really tried it now i can honestly say i barely ever listen yeah same Same. i can't i can't can't even i can't even listen to it yeah i can't either yeah do you know what i i noticed after having all these convictions that every time i would listen to hip-hop i would feel provocative within Mm, myself 
Yeah. Like You're I more think, like lustful and yes, more like and just like yeah, you can cuss see more. Exactly. Yeah. I can see it in my eyes. I can see the way in which I'm moving. Mm. Like it's so subtle and you would never mm-hmm. think, but it's Man. so real. I, I was just gonna say, like, even though like music it's so subtle what the enemy does with music, but now music is so blatantly in your face. Yeah. yeah. With Satan. Oh, absolutely. I'm like, when did this... Like, the music videos, they're Sam like... Smith, Doja Sam Cat. Smith. Like, Don't even get me started what? with Sam Smith. We can, t- we can talk about that on y'all's yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, okay. no, yeah no. we'll talk like, about that. He's not it's hiding anymore. Like, they're no. literally glorifying it, glamorizing it. I'm like... And everything. And people think it's funny. I'm like, Satan is not funny yeah. like hell is not funny this is i always say this if nothing else what does satan represent darkness evil bad Murder. lies he's an accuser so, and so we're, we're putting this evil up on the stage and what message are you putting out like if nothing else if it's yeah. not even spiritual what is the message like, do you you're feel better out? after listening to that like do we genuinely feel it's better do you do you look at that and you're like oh my god i feel like a better person yeah, yeah. probably not yeah <laughs> no. Okay, well, I guess we're okay. gonna. We're, we've been chit chatting like we've we been on a roll. We can talk for <laughs> hours. I, so Literally, I love it. Guys. This is so fun. I love you guys. So I love you guys. Same. Love y'all. So, so much. Literally, same. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I love this conversation. So, you guys, check out now their podcast. Their podcast is coming out on the twenty seventh. Yes, yeah, so it's gonna yeah. be a couple. So days just wait a little bit. We also want to say thank you to Hello Studios for hosting mm-hmm. us yes. at their yes. studio. Thank you. Um, they did all this for us. So shout out to you, Taylor. Shout out to Taylor. Oh, if you guys come to Dallas, need a podcast studio, check them out. And uh, now check out their part two yes. on Girls Gone Bible. And get Maddie's book. While get Maddie's yes. book, <laughs> yes. And we just pray genuinely this podcast yeah. is a blessing mm-hmm. to you. Like, we literally got on our hands and knees before we this did. and prayed because beautiful. we want to cover it because yeah. we know that people may look at us and be like, oh, they're so weird or, like, whatever. They're, they're weird. Jesus but freaks, but whatever. Yeah, call me Jesus <laughs> freak. I don't freaking care. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, if it's such free, care. let's go, baby. <laughs> So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys again next Tuesday for another episode of Happy and Healthy. Um, we'd love to hear your thoughts on Instagram. Follow all of us and DM us. And we'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah. So we pray this blesses you. And thank you guys for joining me on my podcast. We love you love guys. Bless you. Stay happy and healthy. Bye, guys.